It's time for a radical encounter with the Word of God with Pastor Jerry O'Brien. Each week they will tag team your faith to leave you stronger, wiser, and more solid in your walk with Christ. Now is not the time for lukewarm preaching. Now is the time for a radical encounter. Yes, 
God is raising up a new generation, one with fire in their bones, one that is not afraid to go up on the mountain and seek the face of God. Joel said that in the last days he was going to pour out his spirit upon your sons and your daughters and your old mans are going to see dream dreams and young men are going to have visions and upon your manservants and maidservants he was going to do great signs and they're going to prophesy. God said he was going to do great signs in the sky and upon the earth. Joel says in the third chapter, he says multitudes and multitudes will be in the valley of decisions. So beat your plowshares into swords and beat your uh, pruning uh, knives into spears because we are in the last days. He said, let the weak say that they are strong. So I want you to hear the spirit today. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit says. It is time. Oh, can't you feel it in your spirit, friends? Can't you see it in the news? It's time. Yes, it's time. Well, welcome. I'm Pastor Jerry O'Brien with Radical Encounter, as I've said before, and this is another day. It's a wonderful day in the Lord. And God has got a special message here today. It's a radical message because we're living in radical times. Now, I'm going to show you something today. I'm going to show you a footage of an interview that I had with my sister who's down in West Virginia. And before we get to that, I want to explain to you why I got my shirt on. <laughs> I got my West Virginia shirt on because I come here with some testimonies about what God is doing in West Virginia. Now, uh, you know, most of you that followed me on uh, my program here uh, know that I'm from West Virginia. I was born and raised in Williamson, West Virginia. And when I graduated, I moved up here. Uh, uh, but I've gone, I've ministered in many churches in West Virginia, Williamson, uh, uh, Mingo County, Logan County, all down through there. And uh, back in October of last year, God sent me down there with a prophetic word to begin to tell and, and to pronounce the arrival of a great awakening. And uh, this message really was not to those that don't know Jesus, it was to the church, to the Elijah generation. And uh, the scriptures that I like to use today are found in Isaiah 58, verse 12. It says, They that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. They shall raise again the foundations of many generations and shall be called to repair the breach and restore a past to dwell in. Now what he's talking about, Isaiah is talking about a future time that he was not going to be a part of in that uh, uh, his physical body was not going to be here. He was talking about a time that we live in now and that there was going to be through those scriptures, there was a clear picture that he drew that there were going to be some biblically moral foundations that were going to be utterly destroyed. And they were going to be torn down to the point that God was going to have to raise up somebody to restore those things so that they can be in a, a, a position to uh, begin to mentor all of the new converts that will be brought in to the kingdom of God. Now, the song that I sang right before this program was a song that I wrote called, It Is Time. And in that song, you, would, you heard the words, it says, there is awakening happening in the body of Christ, from the Baptist to the Methodist and, and uh, Christians all alike. You see, listen, uh, an awakening is when God is pouring out His Spirit all over on the lost, those that do not know Christ, bringing them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and who He is uh, in their lives, and they receive it, and that is evangelism unto salvation. And then the second part of the awakening is the revival uh, that begins to take place into God's people, uh, into the uh, 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 church of God, in, into the body of Christ. That revival is stirring up those who've been in the, the uh, body of Christ, who've been serving God, but for whatever reason, it, it doesn't really matter what reasons, because we see many people who've fallen by the wayside. We've seen many people who have really been uh, wounded in the battle, 
and uh, uh, they've been discouraged and they pull back. And, and uh, times of revival, times of refreshing are meant to restore those visions and store that passion in the hearts of the church. And that's what God is doing. And that's the second half or part two, not necessarily in those uh, order, but it's a part of a great awakening. And in that song, I wrote that song about uh, uh, four or five years ago with the unctioning of the Holy Spirit that God was going to raise up uh, in the last days. And the second half of that song says, yes, there are Christians who've been uh, wounded in the battle. Uh, they've fallen by the wayside. But God has sent restoration through His Word to bring healing. And there's healing in His Word. And, and that's exactly what is happening. So I want to tell you today, We've got a, a, a roll in that I want to show you. It's a testimony about this great awakening that God is bringing across the land. This just so happens to be in Williamson, West Virginia. And, and we're on set. We're at the uh, historical Mountaineer Hotel that I used to deliver papers at when I was a little boy. And, and so we're on set. So you, the lighting may not be exact, but the testimony is powerful. This will do, uh, uh, give you a good uh, uh, insight of when God sent me down there. You'll hear it from an eyewitness of my, my sister who's telling the testimony when I called her up and said, man, God is up to something. We got to get ready. And so I'm going to go into that roll in and you're going to see, and it's about 10 minutes long. So listen to this testimony and then I'll come right back and I'll pick up where I left off about your responsibility and my responsibility in this great awakening. You see, it's shake and bake. And we get to help. For some of you young people, you don't know what that is. But us older people, that was a, a, a commercial that was advertising uh, uh, the shake and bake that you would put chicken in. And, and the little girl at the end of the uh, commercial said, yeah, mama, it's shake and bake. And I got to help. You and I get to help and we are required to help and we've been given a mission in this great awakening. And I want to come back and I want to tell you what that is. So here we go. We're going to go into this testimony with my sister, Susan West. Well, we're sitting here in the historical Mountaineer Hotel. This was the place where I used to deliver papers when I was a little boy. I'm sitting here with my sister, Susan West. And we got a lot of stories that we could tell about this place, don't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, you know, the stories that we used to tell in this area, you know, one of the things that kind of stands off in my mind with what's going on down here is, you know, how uh, uh, so depressed that this area has been for a long time in that, you know, uh, because of the economic, because of the, uh, uh, the uh, mines shutting down, and the railroads laying off and people not having jobs. There's been so many people that have not have hope and so many people have left the area of the culture. But I'm telling you, there's something that's going on here in Appalachia, right here in Williamson, West Virginia. And Sue, you, you've lived here all your life and uh, you know, uh, the, tell me uh, and tell the viewers, what, what do you see that's going on here, you know, you live here. Well, Pastor, as you know, you're my brother, you should know, I, I used to do a, a radio program here in Williamson, did it for years, it was called uh, Co Country Sunday, and so I worked with a lot of the pastors in the area, and I talked with them, and you know, that's really probably when all of the uh, Williamson started going down. Uh, and we had all discussed back then, we would pray, we would pray, and it wasn't just Pentecostal, it was Baptist, it right. was Methodist, we had, them, we had them all, you know, that came in, even you would yeah. come up, and we would do church on radio, and we all were praying for the same thing, and we were praying for, uh, you know, for, for a, a, the spirit to fall, that was the main thing, we wanted, and we hungered for it. And uh, as a matter of fact, the churches would get together and they would go throughout the town and we would pray on buildings. I don't know how many bars we shut down, praise the Lord. <laughs> but we had put down, you know, got down and, and, you know, all of this has been going on for years, praying, you know, and as the economy has, has went downwards, spiral, it's kind of like they all come into one accord. And, and when they did, 
about that time, that's when you called in October and you said, I'm coming down there, I gotta talk to you. We gotta we gotta get these pastors together, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. And I said, well, Okay. You know, I'm like, he's talking too <laughs> yeah. fast. Yeah. Well that yeah, that's when I and you may remember because I minister a message called retooling. You know, and, and that's what God had told us. I, I wasn't just coming down here because they had to do it down here. It was what God was telling us that we had to do. And the reason was that God was going to pour out his spirit upon the Elijah generation. And that the Elijah generation, you and me, we had to get ready. You remember that? You know, yeah. We were, uh, we're, we're, we were down at the field house. Well, that's what, that's what I was going to say. You called and, and, you know, I was trying to rack my brain, where can we hold this at? Because he wanted to do it in, in somewhere where he could, you know, be neutral. So I said, how about the field house? Let's, let me see if I can get the field house. Well, I did. We got the field house. Went in there and he, he gave that message to us uh, about retooling. He said, he told us then that, which, you know, he wasn't the only one prophesying, there was other people, but he brought it to my attention, you know, because he was very radical about it, because he was saying, you got to listen to me, you got to understand, this is what's going to happen here in Williamson. He said, there, the Spirit's going to fall, and it's not going to be in the churches, it's going to be in the schools, it's going to be outside the schools, it's going to be in the workplace, and it's going to be this, and I'm going like, <laughs> and he said, so you're going to have to retool, you know, that's what we need to do. Our family, our brothers and sisters in Christ are going to have to retool and be prepared for this, and I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> and so, you know, he preached this, and, and, and he told this, and then he left, and God started moving in this area, and I I'm sorry, but I do get very, yeah. you know, very emotional about this because I have prayed for it for so long. And the spirit was moving in the schools without no parents, no teachers. It was, it was led by the students. It was brought on by the Holy, Holy Ghost. And Jerry, uh, what I remember at the time when I was, I was thinking about that movie Moses. Yes. And you know when uh, the Lord told him to paint the the blood around the door, I was thinking that was what was going on, that the spirit was flowing through the school. And I could see it in my mind's eye, and I was going like, God, this is something that no man's going to be able to stop because this is God. Yeah. And then I'm told that all this going on in Logan, all this other stuff going on, and I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. man, just make it poor, yes, you know? Yes. And you see, here's the thing uh, that you got to understand, and Susan and I were talking that this is not just happening in Mingo County, in, in, in uh, uh, Del Martin, uh, West Virginia, uh, or Logan, West Virginia. It's happening in Tennessee. It's happening east, a little east of uh, Lexington, Kentucky. God is breaking out, not in the church, it outside the churches. God is reaching in, and that's what many uh, of us have been prophesying, that there is an awakening, and that's what's happening. You know, Susan, and I've said it in three or four different interviews, and people are probably tired of hearing me say it, but uh, when I woke up this morning, I looked, and we went out, and I looked at the mountains as I was walking, and the fog was lifting off of the mountains, and you know what I heard in my spirit? It says, this is a physical manifestation of the veil that is lifting spiritually in this area and in our nation. It's not an accident, Sue, that uh, the National uh, Day of Prayer, they have, have their theme for this year, which is this coming Thursday, uh, is Wake Up America. And when I saw that fog lifting up off the mountains, I heard in my spirit the veil is being lifted and life is being uh, birthed into the hearts of people. I saw what the prophet prophesied, Isaiah, and I've said it on some posts, I said it on, you know, when I said it out on Periscope, I said it on Periscope, that Isaiah said it in the second chapter of Isaiah, the second verse. He said, uh, in the last days, and that's the times we're living now, that the mountains of the Lord's house will be lifted up to the tops of the uh, uh, hills and it shall be established in the hills 
and all nations will be drawn to it, meaning all people. This goes across denominational barriers. This goes across uh, 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 gender barriers, racial barriers, uh, generational barriers. God is pouring his spirit out in strange places. <laughs> you know, like I remember, I, I specifically remember telling you, it's not going to look like church. Remember that? Right, yeah. He told us that, uh, you know, the Elijah and Elijah thing got me a little bit confused because I couldn't keep the two separated. Yeah. But I know that Elijah was the one with the mantle and yes. he handed it down to the, the older other. generation. Yes, and Elijah, and this is truly going to be the Elijah generation. Yep, it is. Because I have talked to kids much younger than us. I mean, I'm talking... 15 to 16 years old that would absolutely blow your shoes yes, off because yes. I mean they are so in in love with God and and just looking in their eyes and, and seeing them the hunger and I think too you know the Bible tells us you know we are in in this area we are in a really you depressed. know depressed area and I don't know, but this verse keeps coming to my head. If my people would turn away from their sins. Yes. Whew. Second Chronicles 7, 14. And if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, yes. seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their sins, and I will hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. And that's what's happening right now. One of the things that I said that, that God showed me, that we were in a repurposing season meaning that God was going to take things that had been discarded, uh, uh, things that were no longer used, and uh, uh, things that were thrown away, and he was going to repurpose them. And, I, and, and he spoke to me that that's how many people feel. And he's going to repurpose us so that when our children, the Elijah generation, uh, uh, come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be in a stable, spiritually stable position to where we can disciple them. And I remember saying that it's going to happen to our family. And here, you know, my brother's grandchildren got saved. My, our sister's grandchildren got saved. We baptized them today. Yep. And I'm telling you, you know, uh, uh, you were the one that reminded me that I, back in October... I said, God, and we're, we were in the field house. That we didn't know. We didn't know it was going to be turned into where the actual uh, revival is being held because it is so, it is so big. I mean, so many people coming that not one church can handle, it. and all churches are actually coming together in that in that field house. And and I, I told Jerry, Jerry kept saying, Well, you know, I'd like to come down there. And I said, Jerry, do you realize? Yep. That this was this is all happening yep. where you know, six months ago they repurposed. Yep. God has repurposed this building. Six and this months is ago, happened. yeah, I got to yeah. jump in. You know, we, we we do this all the time when we <laughs> on the front porch. Six months ago, when I came down here, she said, "Jerry, you don't realize you prophesied that God was going to repurpose things and that we were going to have to retool what we did in our methods in church." Do you realize that the field house, Williamson Field House, where we used to play basketball, where you used to cheerlead, where you used to, we used to do things, uh, is go, it was repurposed? That's where we were, and God repurposed it because it was the only place in the area that could hold everything. Exactly. Yeah, the only place, you know. Well, we're running out of time here, you know, and we could go on for a long time. But I just got to tell you, I, I want to encourage you. That the veil is being lifted and God is revealing himself to people. And the Lord says where the people can't get in to give the gospel, I'll get in there and I'll birth the gospel from within it. we got to keep doing what we're doing and I encourage you to because God is up to something. Well, there you go. You heard that testimony. You've heard that interview. And that really lays down the foundation of what God is doing in these days. In these times, God is up to something. But I didn't show you that just so you can look at what God is doing in West Virginia. I mean, it's awesome. You can imagine me being from West Virginia and, and how excited that I am and, and uh, was when this began to unfold. But I'm not just excited because it's happening in my hometown. I'm not just excited because it's happening in the state that I was born in. 
I'm excited because it's happening in the environment that you and I are living in today. And God has purposed you and I to be a part of this great awakening. So it's not, you know, what's happening in West Virginia and the Appalachian Mountains of West Virginia. It's also happening in North Carolina. It's happening in Tennessee. It's happening in Virginia. It's happening in New Mexico. Among the Elijah generation, that young generation, God is revealing himself. And it's not going, it's not happening in the churches. Uh, it's literally happening out into the public areas. It's happening on the playgrounds and in the schools and in the workplaces. But you and I have a part to play, just as the scriptures I quoted in Isaiah uh, uh, 58, verse 12. They that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. They that shall be of thee means it's not going to be everybody. Because not everybody's going to be willing to pay the price. Not everybody's going to be willing to retool their lives, retool their finances, retool their purposes to do the will of God. Not everybody's going to hear it. Isaiah was talking about a future time, a time of, uh, that was going to be a, 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 a time of great moral decay. But God was going to raise up somebody that knew a God and knew who their God was and encourage them and revive them. I like the definition of revive that I saw in one uh, 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 translation. It says, to cause to grow that which has stopped growing or to refresh that has become stale. And you see, this is what happens through the body of Christ. Many times that happens. Well, listen, I want to tell you something. You're called by God to stand up so that we can raise up this generation that God is revealing himself to. He is literally calling on you and me, and we get to be a part of this great awakening because it's happening here. I heard Lima, Ohio, uh, the, the, the young generation is seeing God in a way they've never saw God before and accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You and me have an important part to play. Just because I'm a preacher doesn't mean that I'm any more required to do it. You are required to do it. It says, they that shall be of thee. It didn't say the preachers. It says those who would, would hear the word of God and would dare to believe that God could use them. I want to pray with you right now. Say, Lord Jesus, equip me. Help me take the word that I have heard right now and implement it in my life so that I can be this vessel that raise up that generation in Jesus' name. I believe that when you prayed that with me, something started in your life and there is a new uh, 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 excitement and new growth in your uh, life that is going to enable you to do what God's called you to do. Well, listen, our time is over right now. I'm running out of time here, but I want to encourage you to visit our website and, 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 and check on that website, uh, uh, go through the pages there uh, and see how you can become a part of what God is doing. And I'd like to ask you uh, to consider being a financial supporter of this program. The gospel is free, but the avenues of getting the gospel cost, getting it out, costs money. So I'd like to invite you to be a partner with us. But we'll be here next Sunday. So tell somebody about the program and get up, let God use you, and we'll see you here next Sunday. All right, God bless you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. If you did, visit our uh, website, faithharvestfellowship.org. And stay tuned next week for another Radical Encounter. God bless you.